Hello, everybody. Welcome to the next episode, episode chapter of Fallout Quest Hero. Now, we didn't read the uh, level up notes. So, uh, my... Oh, my... Itchy. It, it's been a weird day today. Level up. Oh, my... How is Lil Pip getting all this XP? Like, did, did she... Okay, yeah, okay. You, she did do stuff this time. Kill all the suit mutants. I remember. Mighty Telekinesis, level 3. Telekinesis is Twilight Sparkle tier. Holy shit. Twilight can do a lot with Telekinesis. You can handle multiple objects with ease. And with enough focus, you could probably carry around an Ursa Minor. Alright, we saw what Twilight Sparkle can do. That's some serious shit. So let's see the opening bit for the next chapter. Betrayal! Every time that word, every time I see the word betrayal, I just think of the Spoony song of Betrayed Me. Tell me that my friends are all lying to me and avoiding me because they don't like my parties and they don't want to be my friends anymore. A dick. Oh, are they finally going to just sit little Pip down and talk to her? I don't know. Let, let's, let's find out. God damn it. It's an hour long. K-Cat, why you do this? Addiction. How do you know when you're trapped? When you want something more than anything else? When you find yourself lying to your friends and hiding things from them because you didn't want them to know? When you can't go a week without indulging? A day? Or simply when you insisted that because none of the above really applied to you, you were fine? We had crashed and everything went black, like somebody blowing out a candle. I was lying on the street, knocked out and badly hurt. But in the depths of my unconsciousness, I was still crashing. Pinkie Pie's last message plagued my dreams. By the time I had regained my consciousness, the party time mint house had worn off, and I was back in the mire of my own feebleness. Even the multicolored pyrotechnic display that consumed three city blocks behind us failed to fully pierce through my mental fog with its brilliance. Dip. As I peeled myself off the rubble-strewn street, my mind's eye could still see that skeleton, alone in a corner, a clutched figure of a friend having fallen into a ribcage. Oh. And still all I wanted was another party time mintel. To clear the fog and confusion. To make me brilliant so I could help my friends. In that moment, I realized that even if they didn't meet any of the criteria on my own mental checklist of warning signs, I risked losing control. I still chose whether I took a PTM or not, and I could refuse to at any time. But, I had reached a point where I didn't feel right. Didn't even feel like myself unless I had that clarifying and enlightening boost from party time mintels. Maybe, yeah. just maybe, I did have a problem. Yeehaw! No, at least he cried out triumphantly it. as he fluttered back to the rest of us. Now that's how you do a dash at style. Steel hooves groaned deeply as the metal clad steel ranger pushed himself up to his armored hooves. For the record, he grumbled. No pony here is allowed to complain about my battle tactics being excessive ever again. Ah, He's warming Aww. up to the party! One of the griffins, Butcher, I think, cried out. My wing, I think it's broken. Velvet Remedy dragged herself out of the wreckage of the overturned wagon she'd landed in. Her own body, torn and bleeding, particularly a deep gash on her forehead. Ooh, but she ignored those her own bleed wounds, bad. Hobbling towards the badly injured griffin. About halfway to the griffin, she stopped, standing shakily as she gazed down at the swirling prismatic fire behind us. Merciful Celestia, I hope no pony was living in any of those buildings. Calamity landed proudly next to her. Course not. Cleared the raiders of that pit yesterday evening, remember? Ah, nice. We did what, when? Velvet Remedy swayed a bit and reached up to wipe the stream of blood out of her eye. Oh, you mean when you flew off and left the rest of us worried sick about you? She put her hoof down and took one more There's step There's a guy with a broken patience, wing saying, over there. You want to help him? I'll help. Hold still. She made it three more steps before fainting. Whoa there, Calamity exclaimed as he caught her before she could hit the pavement. He held on to Velvet as she slumped. I tried to trot over to her, only to find that I was lying down. That seemed surprising. I tried to get up, and sharp agony lanced through my right foreleg. Broken leg? I lifted it, trying to understand what was wrong. It felt heavy. Oh. My eyes took in the spear of rebar jutting through it just oh! above the dead screen of my pit buck. Fuck! Oh... That's not good. I looked up to see the dark form of an armored griffin approaching me. 
Then my eyes rolled up and I lost consciousness again. It already required the codes when they started boxing us in. We thought it was a stroke of luck that they were pushing us towards the roof, but those bitches turned our escape route into a trap. Damn, Rebar! I woke Rebar. up for the second time to the sound of Blackwing and Steelhoof's deep in conversation. I didn't think I'd passed out for more than a few minutes. I felt weaker than I had back when I was sick in Steelhoof's cabin, deeply ill, and my right foreleg throbbed with such pain that I just couldn't hold back my tears. Did it pierce the bone? Oh. My team noticed Alicorns checking out at least one safe in the building. Steelhoof pointed out. Did they know you had the codes already? Blackwing laughed. Well, we sure didn't advertise it. My attention drifted. The beauty of Velvet Remedy had settled down next to me while I was out. Velvet Remedy was kneeling over me, her healing horn glowing. It was a position that even I was getting tired of seeing her in. Yeah. Her head was wrapped in magic-laced bandages, a large patch of red seeping into them over her mending wound. I hope you like the taste of Rataway, little Pip, she said, smiling and trying to sound casual. Got all irradiated! I could detect the strain in her voice, no matter how well she hid it. Steelhoofs is the only one of us who won't be guzzling a crate full if I can get Dr. Helpinghoof to sell us his stock. Velvet, are you alright? You fell. Velvet smiled softly to me. I have a concussion, but it shouldn't be too serious. I'm more worried about you, little Pip. <laughs> I'd be fine. A few healing potions and I'd be good as new. I told her so. Velvet winced. Why did she wince? Little Pip, you can't take a healing potion. Not while that thing is still in you. I looked at the bloody, ribbed metal javelin that grotesquely skewered my foreleg. Oh, Velvet yeah, Remedy that, continued. that makes sense. My magic and our medicine can patch you up, yes. But the metal rod has to come out first. Yeah. Because if, like, this was going the to healing hurt. potion uses magic to fuse the flesh Velvet together, Remedy me that you don't want that inside you lot. if you're fusing flesh. Uh-uh. No. I floated out the memory orb from Horseshoe Tower, contemplating it a moment. Did you... The lock on that safe had been the hardest I'd ever tried to crack. It had been beyond yeah, the magical abilities of two yet, right? What secrets could it have been hiding? According to Blackwing, the mercenaries had already found the codes. They were just looking somewhere else in the building. Of course, the Alicorns didn't know that for sure. They were probably just being thorough. On the count of three, I suggested developed remedy. She nodded, her lips pressed into a thin line. Oh yeah, that's gr One, that that's a really two. good idea. Like to. Like, block out the pain, just use the memory orb. Oh, that that's actually really smart. So much for the, uh, negative intelligence. I wouldn't think of that. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't. So, yeah, so much for the negative intelligence of Party I reached out with my magic and touched the orb. Even as Velvet Remedy's horn flared and the shaft of the rebar was enveloped with light, all of my senses dropped away into another world. I was sitting before banks of terminals, between two other ponies that I paid absolutely no attention to. There was an ear bloom buzzing softly in my ear. The screen on the terminal was nothing but a little balloon icon expanding until it popped, then filling again. The pony I was riding was achy from sitting in the same position for too long. Her mane itched, as did... Yikes. Okay, his mane itched, as well as other places. Wow. And I suddenly very, very much wanted to be back in the Manhattan ruins, feeling rebar being yanked through my leg instead. The little balloon popped again, and then was replaced by text. Audio transmission intercepted. Transmission originates. Orange Residence, Horseshoe Tower, Manhattan. Transmission received. Transmission destination encrypted. Logging call. Operation oversight required. Perfect. I heard and felt the buck say through my mouth in an utterly bored voice. I felt my hoof punch a button without looking at it. The static in my ear was replaced by voices. Staying with my uncle and auntie Orange. I immediately recognized Apple Bloom's voice. Ah. There was an odd timbre and hoarseness to it, like she'd been crying a lot, but was now all cried out. My host picked up a pencil in his mouth and started doodling on a notepad. I could taste the eraser and feel the little bite marks on the wooden shaft. I tried to focus on taste and sight and sound, ignoring other senses entirely. Is there any word? Yeah, yeah. The other voice was that of Sweetie Belle. She sounded nervous. Worried. More words materialized on the screen before me. 
Illegal encryption broken. Transmission received. Pony perfection. Canterlot. Proceed with voice analysis. The buck I was riding sighed loudly and hit another button, then went back to doodling, only half watching the screen. Voice analysis in progress. No, Applebloom claimed dourly. Dr. Ponies will say Sis will pull through, but... But? Sis? Tweedwell sounded like she was afraid to hear the answer. I mean, that's wonderful news, right? Why don't you sound happy? Applebloom's voice dropped low. I felt myself sitting up a little. Apparently, ponies who were trying to be quiet warranted at least a little attention. There's a... rumor, Applebloom confided in her friend. Some folks are saying that maybe it wasn't so much of an accident. What? Sweetie Belle gasped, her voice dropping to a whisper, even in her shock. Who would want to hurt Applejack? Well, you're at war with an entire nation, so... The screen flashed new information so... spilled out rapidly. Somewhere, a mainframe had just figured out who was talking and about what. Now, the screen and the ear bloom had my host's full attention. They say that maybe it was another pony in her own ministry. Sweetie Belle was silent on the other end. In the background, I could hear some pony crying, a soft, heartbreaking weeping. But I couldn't tell whether it was from the unicorn's end or the earth ponies. I didn't have to wonder long. What the hay's going on over there? Sweetie Belle, where are you calling from? Is everything all right? And then, as a darker thought seemed to hit the mare, Did your sister have an accident, too? What? Oh, no, 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 no. My sister's fine. We're, we're at the spa on Leaf Fall Lane. Rarity's been here all afternoon trying to get Fluttershy to stop crying. What? About Applejack? Sweetie Belle sounded guilty. Uh, no. I don't even know what happened yet. Rarity called me over a few hours ago. Apparently when Fluttershy missed their weekly treatment, Rarity went looking for her. She found Fluttershy curled up in a corner of her office at the Ministry of Peace. I don't really know what happened, but... And now it was Applebloom's turn. But... Everything's falling apart! That Rainbow Dash called her a traitor. What? Really? Applebloom wasn't able to keep her voice down like Sweetie Belle could. I heard someone in the background call out questioningly. Applebloom's voice became murky as she called back. No, nothing's wrong, Uncle Orange. It's not the hospital, I'm just talking to Sweetie Belle. Then, after a long pause, she thoughtfully added, Sounds like Rarity and Fluttershy ain't gonna make it up right away. Applebloom spoke clearly once again, addressing Sweetie Belle. Uh, I ought to go. Twilight Sparkle's supposed to be porting in any minute now. She'll be staying with us until Applejack's out of critical. Jesus Christ! And you know how these teleport spells wreak havoc with these here terminals. I really think I could design a better one in my sleep. Besides, Scootaloo would have a right fit if she knew I was talking on an unsecured line. A traitor! Applebloom, can you imagine? Rainbow Dash is her oldest friend, and even where she's the yeah. bearer of the element of loyalty. What the hell was that in the background? Pained. That's kind of like having loyalty itself call you a traitor. That's not how that works. How she, like, That's not how the elements work. Apple Bloom seethed gloomily. How could Rainbow Dash say something like that? I don't know. Easy. Apple Bloom replied. I mean, let's face it. Rainbow Dash is kind of a dumbass. I'm trying to understand anymore. I love her, but she's a dumbass. Fucking no why is no, it when I record my nose always itches? Everything. Ah. Sometimes I just want to dig a hole in the ground and hide until this whole stupid war is over. Stables. The screen flashed. Transmission terminated on receiving end. Content analysis proceeding. Content tagged out for priority. Oversight memory confirmation required. Please report to your supervisor. I felt myself get up and shake to loose the earbud. Damn it. I hate memory extraction. I heard him grump from what felt like my mouth. Hope those mares die in a fire. I returned to a world well, of fuck darkness you too. and incredible pain. But at least I was a mare again. Biting back a scream, I smiled weakly up at Velvet Remedy, who was wrapping my foreleg in healing bandages. That was clever, Velvet Remedy complimented as she floated a couple rejuvenating potions out of a medical box resting beside her. I noticed she wasn't wearing hers and looked around. I could have sworn she was wearing them before I blacked out the second time, but I couldn't remember if she was when I woke up. Not far away, I saw Calamity working on her saddlebags, 
replacing the battle-damaged boxes with newer ones he had scavenged from... somewhere. Anything interesting? Velvet asked, nodding her horn towards the memory orb. I glanced down at the memory orb. The thoughts that it provoked battled for dominance in my head. I had glimpsed hints that all was not well within the Ministry of Technology before, no. but for any pony within the Ministry to have enough drive and animosity towards Applejack to plot her death, that took the conflict to a whole new level. That placed the call sometime after the death of Applejack's big brother, and her corresponding exertion of greater control over her own Ministry. Probably even after Applesnack's memory. A new generation of magically hardened terminals would explain why I kept finding functional ones in the equestrian wasteland. That? Yeah. And, if that call took place when I thought it did, that would explain why the vast majority of terminals were destroyed hunks of scrap. Only the ones deemed most vital or owned by ponies of wealth or prominence could have been upgraded. I was also beginning to see the possibilities that Gardena Grimfeather had recognized an entire vault full of memories. But those thoughts were distractions. Most importantly, Velvet Remedy must never see this memory. Just some buck having a really boring day at work. I lied. Why not? Back I mean, it doesn't. Has Why not? With a broken wing. She won't be able to fly for a while. Her injuries were much worse than when Calamity's wing got shot. Velvet said, glancing towards the Griffin in question. As soon as Velvet looked away, I gave the memory orb a telekinetic fling, sending it soaring to the night air. With luck, the toss would put it close enough to our Dashite's miniature Armageddon that at least the poisonous memory would die in a fire. What? What? What's the problem DJ with that memory? DJ isn't telling the whole story, Blackwing insisted, speaking to Steelhoofs. My metal-shrouded companion had oh-so-casually asked about the massacre of the ghoul ponies on the Celestia Line station. Sure, Grimstar wanted them dead, but a few of the folk in Tempony Tower, like that Doc, were interested in a more amiable solution. Amiable, Steelhoof said with disgust-tinged disbelief. With ghouls. Blackwing hunched. Yeah, well, I've met a few ghoul ponies in my day that were more respectable than most ponies in the wasteland. The Griffin's tone suggested there was more she wanted to add, but she wasn't going to insult the Steel Ranger who had just helped save her life. They aren't like the zombie ponies, although, eventually... Well, yeah, Sheriff Rodgers know, was driving towards zombiehood, um... You know, what? one day... One day, Steel Hooves' act of just being a blatant racist is really going to hurt him. <laughs> uh, it might happen in story, but one day, at some point, he's going to talk to someone who isn't a ghoul, and they're going to get incredibly offended at this. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see if it happens in the story. It, it might not, but it'll be it'll be it'll be interesting to see. Pretty damn sure. Oh, Steel has asked in a manipulatively conversational tone. I was beginning to recognize. I wondered if I should be worried. Did Blackwing or her Griffins have anything to fear from Steel Hooves? How about the ponies of Ten Pony Tower? I didn't think so. But how well did I really know Steel Hooves? How well could some pony know him when every show of opinion or emotion could be a cleverly crafted deception? Yeah, Sheriff Riddingtail didn't want cohabitation, even if some of the ten pony folk were willing to give it a go. That bastard had plans to wipe out every pony in that tower and take it over for himself and his crew. Blackwing slashed at the air in disgust. There's a whole flock of zombie ponies in the maintenance tunnels near ten pony tower. He tried to pay us to unlock an old tunnel entrance so he could let them swarm into the place. Steelhose was deathly silent for a moment. Then, he tried to bribe you to break a contract. Surely he had to know that a griffin's honor wouldn't stand for that. Why didn't he just do it himself? I saw how Blackwing puffed up with pride. The fool couldn't. Only unlocks from the inside. By Luna, Steelhose gasped. I hope you told Chief Grimstar about this. A grimace formed on Blackwing's beak. Actually... She clawed at the ground. I didn't see any point in fueling that jerk's bigotry after Sheriff Rottentail had been taken out. Truth was, we didn't even go in with the plan to take out more than him and his thugs, but the whole damn place fell on us the moment we took him down. Didn't have a choice but to kill them all then. Steelhoof snickered. Well, who can blame you? But Grimstar needs to know about that potentially fatal flaw in Tempony security. 
Where is this old tunnel entrance exactly? Butcher dropped her dismounted AA cannon battle saddle at my hooves. I blinked at her, not comprehending. Look, you saved our lives up there. We owe you, Butcher explained. Blackwing would probably make you an honorary talent if you were at least a Pegasus. But since you're a unicorn, that just won't fly. She smirked at her own pun. I stared down at the ridiculously huge gun. I, uh, I couldn't, really. I stammered, wondering just what the hell we would do with the thing if I accepted. MOUNT IT ON you THE BATTLE it. BUS! Come on, that'd be cool! You're, you're going to get the battle- I, I keep calling it the battle bus. You're going to get the battle bus eventually, just mount that fucker on it! You could do drive-bys! That would be cool! Oh, do yeah, it! Yeah, well, do it. I need my life more. And I have that thanks to you lot. Blackwing's talons pay back their debts. And don't you deny that you could use her. Little Gilda here will beat a hole through an alicorn's shield and keep her on target for four or five shots of concentrated fire. She cocked her head. Besides, the other idea was a set of our armor, but I don't think it'd fit a pony. Calamity flew up and hovered, staring at it. Actually, I bet I could mount that girl on the steel hose battle saddle. Where? No, not steel hose, the steel battle bus! The huge battle saddle already had a grenade machine gun on one side and a missile launcher on the other. On his back! On his back. Yeah! Calamity tipped his hat, warming to the idea. Sure, she'd have to be mounted afterwards, so Steel Hoofs would have to turn his tail to the target to shoot it, but if we rigged that into that fancy targeting magic. Oh no. I was stopping this insanity right there. <laughs> oh, fuck you! Steel Hoofs, if anything. Come on! Weapon. You need more DACA! Right? I mean, it's all about the DACA! And the WAH! And just. just. all the guns! And. and, and very. and, you know. While the Steel Hose idea is hilarious, I can just imagine his big ass quad AA gun on his back. It, it's hilarious with the grenade launcher and the minigun. I really think you should mount that on the battle bus once you get that ready and going. Because that thing could use some extra defenses other than, like, gun ports. Right? I mean, come on. And that was less overpowered. Something he could safely shoot in hallways. No, actually, how about you just owe us a favor? I'm not much for owing favors that might come back to pluck my tail feathers. Blackwing, finally done with talking to Steel Hooves, broke into the conversation. But if you can think of something more acceptable by the end of the week, we should still be in the area. Butcher looked to her team leader. What's the plan? She laid down next to her battle saddle and started pulling it on. Griffins it don't really need battle saddles, though. They got claw fingers. Finish the contract. Deliver the codes and get our payment. After that... Blackwing looked behind her at one of the remaining members of her team, who was being virtually mummified by Velvet Remedy. <sighs> by the egg, Blackwing swore. I'll figure something out. Calamity looked disappointed as Butcher resaddled little Gilda. I don't know, how are we supposed to find you? Blackwing fished a small device from her saddlebags. It looked a lot like a stealth buck. Here's a broadcaster. You can attach it to your pit buck and use it to transmit radio messages as well as receive them. Oh no, I've seen stealth towers, bucks. Those guys are range. big. I don't know if you can attach that thing. You already know what frequencies to call on. I nodded, floating it into my own saddlebags. First, I had to restore the spell matrix of my pit buck. I could do that from steel hoof suit just as I had done the reverse. But it was a complicated procedure that I couldn't do while hurt. Or in the dark. Or probably without party time mintals. Oh fuck. No. No, I could do it without them. Even if I didn't feel like I could. I'd done it before, damn it. Seal hoofs trotted up to oh, join us. Oh! Is this where she realizes that the withdrawal effects diminish your intelligence increasingly? That'll be a kick in the ass to go see a doctor about fixing your um, addictions. I was tempted to ask him about his somewhat ominous conversation with Blackwing, but he drew my attention elsewhere. We're being watched. There's a spray bot that's been trying to get our attention without letting me know it's there. Watcher. I excused myself to the little filly's pile of rubble. Sure enough, the sprite bot floated up to me, silent as the sunset. Hello, little pip. Watcher tried to sound casual, but this wasn't a chance meeting. Yeah. If it was, I would have heard music first. What are you all doing out here? And what was that explosion? 
I wondered if Watcher was the shy follower Steelhoofs and I had noticed before. I decided to try the theory. Well, Calamity's been playing with fireworks, and Steelhoofs has been letting you secretly follow us around all day without his knowing. I said darkly. What are you doing? All day? Stalking I don't know what you. you mean, little pip. I just got here. Likely story. Didn't matter. I needed Watcher's help. For what? Watcher, I need a favor. I need you to contact Gaudine and tell her about Blackwing's talons. Watcher was silent long enough that I felt pressed to explain. Gaudine is gathering up griffins who aren't currently under contract. Blackwing lost half her griffins to these alicorns and the survivors are badly wounded. They could use more help than we can give them. We ought to at least let Gaudina give them that option. No. The Sprite Bot's mechanical voice intoned. No? I sat back, surprised. Look, we can help these people. Or do you only care about ponies? I've been willing to help you before because it was to save lives. This isn't saving lives. It's more like a vanity project. I don't reveal myself for a reason. Every time I do, it puts me at risk. Oh, fuck you. Oh, for the love of Luna. I turned away from the floating robot. Then, Watcher surprised me. Fine, I'll do this for you. But you have to agree to do something for me. I have a quest for you. Well, at least he admits it's a quest. You have a what now? Yeah! I blinked, turning back and staring at the spread Quest! Spot. There's a black opal in Ten Pony Tower. It was stolen from me. I want it back. Tentatively, I asked. What's a black opal? A black opal. It's a special gemstone. It's like a memory orb, but used in a recollector. Before I could ask what a recollector was, Watcher enlightened me. Memory orbs hold memories taken from others by unicorn magic, usually through force. A recollector is an enchanted crown that someone can wear when they want to record what they're experiencing, or to relive such a recording even if the wearer isn't a unicorn. I nodded. All right. That sort of advancement made perfect sense. Like Apple Bloom's magic-resistant terminals, I suspected it was a step forward in Arcano technology that came awfully close to the end. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd have been stumbling over them everywhere. Uh, so, you want me to get yeah. a memory orb, sort of, out of Ten Pony Tower and bring it to you? Who has it? What do I look like? Carrier pony? I glowered. But if this is what you require of me in order to be helpful, I'll do it. Where is the thing? I believe it was taken by that radio pony, DJ Pony. Really? Retrieve it for me, and I will relay your message. Wait. What? Watcher wanted me to steal from Olage? Ask about it. I, Don't steal it. I... I fought down a sense of inarticulate rage. Okey, dokey, Loki. I'll see what I can do. My voice was sharp and even. But you send the damn message first. The Sprite Bot hovered while Watcher seemed to contemplate this. Of course, trust goes both ways. Well, maybe. But Watcher just asked me to betray the trust of some pony I cared about. And right now, I cared for and needed homage a whole lot more than some pony hiding behind a Sprite Bot and demanding favors in return for taking action. So, I would ask Amlet for the Black Opal. Yeah! Nicely. There you go! And if she said no, Watcher was out of luck. You can also Suddenly, explain what it's for. Me. My eyes widened as I stared at Watcher's sprite bot. What? Why are you looking at me like that? You haven't disappeared. All your little visits have been getting shorter. It's almost like every time I start to ask a question that you're uncomfortable with, your time with the sprite bot conveniently ends. But now that you have something you want from me, you've... There was a burst of static, and then happy marching music, heavy on the tuba, drum, and harmonica, poured out of the sprite bot as Watcher ran out of time. I wasn't buying it. The sun was beginning to rise, painting the clouds above with magnificent colors and plunging the city into a maze of deep shadows. We all know he's full of shit. I would have enjoyed the walk back if the lack of... We all know Watcher's full of shit. I, I, I've kind of known that since the second meeting with him. That he's full of shit. And he's, we're at 30 minutes. Like, okay, the, the, I'm really happy that little Pip's just going to ask.
ask about instead of just steal. One thing I hate is like, you know this person, just ask them for it. Or better yet, explain what it's for. Explain why you need this doohickey of theirs. They'll probably give it to you if you explain it to them, and if they say no, fuck it, you like them more. Now, I agree a little bit. Ask first, and if she says no, tell Watcher you can fuck off. Because he, he, he's full of shit. I mean, yeah, he helps, but Vanity Project? She's just trying to help them out, dude. I, I think he might really just care for ponies. You know? Like, we, we fucking racist going on here. Uh, the, yeah, that's about it for this time. <clears throat> okay, so, apparently, Fluttershy also did something that caused Rainbow Dash to call her a traitor. Uh, but Rainbow Dash is also kind of a dumbass. So, I'm going to guess it might be some Rainbow Dash... Uh, might felt strongly about. Like, see, Ministry of Peace. She was probably talking to the zebras about something. And, you know, with the war on, Mayo Dash being just an idiot and probably hateful over the death of the Wonderbolts. And since it's kind of sound like midway through the war, death of a lot of ponies, she, um, no doubt called Fluttershy traitor. Probably felt really bad about it, but Rainbow Dash is also headstrong, so I doubt she ever would have apologized. I don't know, everything went, everything, everything got fucked up. I, but I agree. Yeah, fuck Watcher. Homage is better. Why does Homage have it, though? Like, why does Homage have this jewel? I assume it's a jewel, because Opal. It was Opal, right? I think it was. Black Opal? Why would Homage have... Maybe she bought it? Or found it? But apparently it was stolen? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we're only halfway through, so we'll find out in the next video.